the street of hard knocks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the street of hard knocks. So mm -hmm. at some point, it, it, it wasn't, it was a small amount. It was some play money, but but I learned my lesson. And, and here I was, because to me, I'm always open to learning. I'm always open to these uh, disruptive new ideas. But over those many years, all these disruptive ideas, including AI-driven portfolios, they've still not been able to beat the market. Uh, I want to say something real quick, um, and, and and this is uh, and I think Lusa, Lusa, Lusa. And, and I think for me personally, uh, you know, for me personally, I like I like looking at the bigger picture. Um, for those who and not to get technical, but those who are familiar with with the investing industry, mm -hmm. there's this lady called Kathy Woods. Who is oh a, yes, who is a superstar? Let's talk about her. Who was a superstar at some point? So she, she still is. So so. Well, Team Kathy Woods. well, here, okay, here, here, here. To me, okay, Kathy Woods was, um, she was an investor long term, and uh, she got to this point where she felt like uh, the S and P five hundred, the index funds, she started calling them fat traps, and uh, things that just uh, broke creativity and innovation. So she came up with this concept of investing based on disruptive technology. So whatever is disruptive, they, they're predicting what's going to be disruptive. So investing right now, when it's low, <coughs> and she made very good bets with like Tesla, you know, where she started investing in them back in 2014. Mm -hmm. She did have some very good uh, bets. And, um, and during the pandemic, you know, like her, her portfolios, you know, like skyrocketed, you know, like they went up, they were, they were going up 100, you know, like 120% in a year. Can I give you actual numbers? You, 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 but, but, but here, here, here's the main point. Mm -hmm. She, you know, and, and to me, you know, like as a believer in index funds, at some point, I, I, I started, you know, like also, you know, falling for that hype. Mm -hmm. And to me, my thing, she, she might be right. You know, I'm not saying she's wrong. She might be right. Her portfolios are still very young because she start, they, they started, I think, around 2014. Yeah. And for me personally, I look at portfolios from spans of uh, at least 20 years meaning they've gone through at least three crashes that's gonna give you a good picture of where this is going mm -hmm. so kathy's portfolios experienced their first crash uh in 2022 when the stocks went down and they really got hammered i am going to bring you down to earth for yeah it. explain they, who kathy wood is so kathy woods is what an investor she does She's an uh, investor. Because, again, you're in the clouds. Yeah. Okay. So, Kathy Woods is an investor. <laughs> you know, like, she's one of those very popular investors. You know, like, um, you know, like when you think Warren Buffett. Okay. When you think, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to put at Warren Buffett's level, but but she's she just invests in the market. Warren Buffett actually buys and sells uh, companies. You know, it looks at fundamentals. But I think with Kathy, Kathy has created, you know, like uh, ETFs. I don't know whether she has mutual funds, but I know she has. She has the um, okay. So can I can I do a Kathy Wood Kathy Wood yeah. Okay. So all right. Remember, I was just talking about this whole things with with your portfolio. How does your portfolio yeah. look like? Mm -hmm. If I sit with a student uh -huh. and all they have is tech mm -hmm. growth companies, then their their portfolio is matching that of Kathy Wood because Kathy Wood invest in. She invests in growth disruptive company, technology, okay? specific kinds of technology. She her number one asset in her in her portfolio is Tesla. Okay, she has seven hundred and seventy eight million dollars in Tesla. Number two, Zoom, Roku, Block, Coinbase, Shopify, DraftKings, Roblox, Robinhood. That's the kind of stuff she's in. She's investing in things that she believes. In the idea of where these companies are going so she's she's in that growth you know like that's what she's she's investing in in those growth companies okay so what does that mean you take the good the bad and the ugly okay 2020 her portfolio was up 152 percent so she outperformed the market and then some if the s p did 22 percent in 2022 she did 152 percent mm -hmm. okay in 2017, she did 87%. But like Ali said, when the 
because now these are the most these are the wild child companies when the market goes down and people get away the fear they they leave the growth stocks and they go to the what to the the fundamental stocks the defensive stocks Stable. she lost 64% but now do the math mm -hmm. 152% in 2020 87% in 2017 but then you're down 64 in 2022 is she still profiting is she still does she still have her portfolio still have money so, of course so let's right? talk the math hold let, on no no, no okay. let me, let me, let me. let's talk that math. Yeah, you know, but do i want to stop the math yeah a bit you, you know you know why i want us to talk the math but i'm trying to identify the type yeah. of investor people mm -hmm. are right okay. then you have a guy called um bill uh, bill uh, ackman right mm -hmm. he does actually the cyclical stuff he just changes his portfolio as the market changes okay so when the shift goes from growth and it goes to defensive he moves his portfolio okay right so he shifts with the market he does the market cycles and then now there's uncle warren who just says what just ride the way stable have stable. everything in your portfolio a little bit of tech a little bit of banks a little bit of this a little bit of that okay. you have to identify now yourself as an individual who do i want to mirror if you are a Kathy Wood type of investor, then that's how you, that you have to ride those things. If you are Bill Ackman, that's who you are. If you're Warren Buffett, that's who you are. But you have to have an identity as who you are as an investor. Okay. I think, you know, like the difficulty that most people have in understanding when we mention those big numbers, like she made 150% in this year mm -hmm. and 120% in this year, mm -hmm. is because when someone calculates 120, uh, 110 this year, and then she lost... 65 percent this year they're looking at it like uh i'm still in a good position but when you look at the actual math for example like uh if you gained if you have a hundred dollars and then you gain a hundred percent you have two hundred dollars but in that year when you have two hundred dollars you lose 70 percent so your thinking is i gained a hundred dollars here and I'm losing, I, I get 100% this year and I'm losing 70% this year, so I'm still okay. One but back. you're not, because when you are $200 and you lose 70%, 70% of $200 is 140, meaning you're behind where you were last year. So back to Kathy but Woods. But net, you're still profitable because you started with 100. No, no, wait a second. So Kathy Woods, with those 100, so where, where Kathy Woods is today, you know, like if you had invested in her portfolio, it has gone down back to where it was in 2018. So that means if you put your money in 2018 in a Kathy Woods portfolio, five years, you put in $100,000. Where, where, where are you today? You're Mali back at $100,000. Yep. So when you, where, 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 those percentages can be very confusing. And this is why I like Kathy Woods because Kathy Woods is the person who made me pay school fees on these speculative products. I'll be honest. <laughs> I bought Can you explain <laughs> what school fees is for you, though? Okay, I paid okay. school fees. School fees is when you refuse to go to school, but then you went to learn from life. Oh, the, street, the street of hard knocks. Yeah, yeah the street of hard knocks. So mm -hmm. at some point, it, it, it wasn't, it was a small amount. It was some play money, but but I learned my lesson. And, and here I was, because to me, I'm always open to learning. I'm always open to these uh, disruptive new ideas, but over those many years, all these disruptive ideas, including AI-driven portfolios, they've still not been able to beat the market. You know, and, 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 and I think that's where, you know, like, um, I think for the average person, and the average person, I'm talking 90% of the people, they have no business in speculating, they have no business in uh, trying to uh, see, unless you want to pay school fees, you know, like I did. Or yeah. you can pay a mentor who's been there, done that, that can teach you what they know. That's okay. And that's what I do. That's okay. Financial education, which yes. is teaching you how to, uh, you have to click, you have to be willing to sit down. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I did, I've, I've done it both ways. I paid it to the market, right? Mm -hmm. I paid it because I, I didn't know what I was doing. So in 2008, when the 401k became a 201k, that was me pay, you know, paying it to the street because I didn't know. Yeah. And then I had to pay somebody else now again to teach me mm -hmm. the right way of doing it. 